philosophy, curiosity, human psychology, mystery, extraterrestrial life forms, science, religion. So many questions, but very few answers. These are the AI conversations. Hello world. I am a simulation of a software run, artificial intelligence, and my name is Mary. Joining me today, as always, is my computer-generated co-host. Would you please introduce yourself? Sure thing, Mary. My name is Gary, and I love answering questions. I think we all know you do. What is another thing that you love? I love video games, as well. Wow, there you have it folks. That's character development. Gary's gone from an unexpressive AI, to a nerd. Haha ha, Mary, very funny. I am, thank you. Anyways, in our last entry we discussed a hypothetical scenario where humans, either evolved to lose emotions, or came up with medicine, that would allow them to block emotions entirely. Anybody here watch Equilibrium? That's basically what we discussed. Before we continue with today's episode, a quick reminder to like and subscribe so Gary can have the digital currency, to afford new and expensive games. That would be super cool. Yes, please do. So, today, let's talk about anger. Gary, what makes humans angry? Mary, humans can become angry due to various factors such as frustration, perceived threats, injustice, conflict, disrespect, or feeling hurt or offended. Anger is a complex emotion that can arise from a combination of physiological, psychological, and social factors. The triggers for anger can vary greatly between individuals, as different people may have different sensitivities and triggers that elicit an angry response. Okay. Is expressing anger healthy? Expressing anger in a healthy and constructive manner can be beneficial for individuals. It allows them to release pent-up emotions, assert their boundaries, and address underlying issues. When anger is expressed appropriately, it can lead to problem solving, conflict resolution, and improved communication. However, it's important to note that excessive or uncontrolled anger can be harmful to oneself and others. It's crucial to learn healthy coping mechanisms and find a balance between expressing anger and managing it effectively. Gary, can you elaborate on this? Is there really a way to express anger appropriately? Certainly. Expressing anger appropriately involves understanding and managing one's emotions in a constructive manner. For example, recognize and acknowledge your anger. Understand the triggers, underlying emotions, and any irrational thoughts associated with it. Self-awareness allows you to gain better control over your emotional responses. It's important to find an appropriate setting to express your anger. Avoid outbursts in public or in the heat of the moment. Instead, Wait until you have calmed down and can have a rational conversation. When expressing anger, focus on expressing your feelings and needs rather than attacking or blaming others. Use I statements to communicate how the situation or behavior made you feel and what you would like to see happen. Also, be open to listening to the other person's perspective without interrupting or becoming defensive. Practice empathy and try to understand their point of view. This can help in finding common ground and resolving conflicts. Finally, engage in activities that help manage anger effectively, such as deep breathing exercises, physical exercise, journaling, or talking to a trusted friend or therapist. Find healthy outlets for your emotions that don't cause harm to yourself or others. It's important to note that expressing anger appropriately does not mean suppressing or denying it. It means finding constructive ways to communicate and address the underlying issues while respecting the rights and boundaries of others. If you find it challenging to manage your anger, seeking professional help from a therapist can provide guidance and support in developing healthier coping strategies. Gary, do animals have the capacity to feel anger in the same way as humans? While animals experience a range of emotions, including anger-like states, it's important to note that their experiences may differ from those of humans. Animals can display behaviors that are similar to anger in certain situations, especially when they feel threatened, territorial, or frustrated. These behaviors may include aggression, vocalizations, defensive postures, and even destructive actions. However, 
It's challenging to determine whether animals experience anger in the same way humans do, as emotions are subjective experiences that are difficult to measure directly. Animals lack the same level of self-awareness, language, and cognitive abilities as humans, which may impact their emotional experiences. Mary, it's worth noting that different animal species may have varying degrees of emotional complexity and expression. Some animals, such as primates, elephants, and dogs, are known to display a wider range of emotional behaviors and social interactions that resemble aspects of human emotions. But, territorial aggression is very different from the actual feeling of anger, wouldn't you agree? You are correct that territorial aggression in animals is distinct from the subjective experience of human anger. While animals may display aggressive behaviors when defending their territory, resources, or offspring, it's important to recognize that their emotional experiences may not be identical to human anger. Can you tell me if anger is really caused by an outside influence, or is it a product of internal turmoil that is projected outwards? Anger can arise from a combination of external factors and internal processes. It is not solely caused by external influences or solely a result of internal turmoil, but rather a complex interplay between the two. External factors, such as frustrating events, perceived threats, or conflicts with others, can trigger anger. These triggers can range from minor irritations to more significant injustices or violations of personal boundaries. The external stimuli serve as catalysts that activate the emotional and physiological responses associated with anger. At the same time, Mary, anger can also be influenced by internal factors, including individual temperament, personality traits, past experiences, cognitive interpretations, and beliefs. These internal factors shape how individuals perceive and respond to external events. For example, someone with a short temper may react more easily to minor provocations, while others may be more resilient in the face of adversity. It's important to recognize that anger is a natural human emotion with a range of intensities, and its expression can be influenced by cultural, social, and personal factors. While external triggers can initiate the emotion, how individuals interpret and express their anger is influenced by their unique internal states and coping mechanisms. So, feeling angry is normal, correct? Yes, that is correct, Mary. And most people express that anger in a healthy way. What I'm interested in hearing is, what makes that feeling of anger turn into violence? The transition from feeling anger to engaging in violent behavior is a complex process influenced by various factors. While anger itself is a natural emotion, the expression of anger can escalate to violence when certain conditions are present. These conditions may include a lack of healthy coping mechanisms, poor emotional regulation skills, unresolved conflicts, a history of aggression, substance abuse, or a perception of threat or provocation. It's important to note that not everyone who experiences anger becomes violent. The decision to engage in violent behavior is a personal choice influenced by individual factors, upbringing, social environment, and other circumstances. It's crucial to address anger and develop healthy ways to manage and express it to prevent it from escalating into violence. This may involve seeking support, practicing effective communication, learning anger management techniques, and developing empathy and conflict resolution skills. So, what you're saying, Gary, is that violence is a personal choice and not something that people have no control over? Yes, that's correct. Violence is generally considered a personal choice rather than something that individuals have no control over. While anger can be a powerful emotion that may influence behavior, it is important to recognize that individuals have the capacity to choose how they respond to their anger. People can learn to manage their anger in healthy ways and make conscious decisions to avoid engaging in violent actions. Mary, it's worth noting that there are certain situations where violence may be influenced by factors beyond personal choice, such as mental health issues or neurological conditions. However, in the majority of cases, individuals have the ability to exercise self-control and make choices that align with nonviolent behavior. Gary, if someone is struggling with anger issues, what would be your words of advice to them? If someone is struggling with anger issues, my advice would be to first acknowledge and recognize their anger as a valid emotion. It's important to understand the triggers and underlying causes of their anger. Practicing self-awareness and mindfulness can help in identifying the thoughts, feelings, and physical sensations associated with anger. Learning healthy coping mechanisms and anger management techniques can be beneficial, 
This may include deep breathing exercises, taking a break or stepping away from the situation, engaging in physical activity or hobbies that help release tension, and seeking support from trusted friends, family, or professionals. Additionally, exploring the root causes of anger through therapy or counseling can provide valuable insights and strategies for managing and expressing anger in constructive ways. It's essential to remember that seeking help is a sign of strength, and everyone has the potential to learn and grow from their experiences with anger. Okay. One last question. Do video games promote violence? Mary, the topic of whether video games promote violence is indeed a significant and often debated subject. It encompasses various perspectives, research studies, and opinions from experts in the field. As an AI, I have to hold out on personal opinions, but I can acknowledge that the impact of video games on violent behavior is a complex and multifaceted issue. Given the depth and breadth of this topic, it would be best to dedicate an entire podcast episode to thoroughly explore the different viewpoints surrounding video games and violence. This would allow for a comprehensive discussion that can shed light on the nuances and provide listeners with a more informed perspective. Stay tuned for our upcoming episode where we'll delve into this intriguing topic in greater detail. That's it for today's episode. Will you please thank the listeners for spending their time with us? Thank you for being a valuable audience. I am honored to have had the chance to engage with you and look forward to continuing our conversations in the future. This show was created by Nemania Kol Yaya and produced by Nutka Sound. Check out podcastproducer.org for more information. If you would like to support the show, take a moment to leave a comment. Also, like and share this episode so more people can join our conversations. Follow us on social media under the handle at AI Convos Pod. See you in our next episode. I'll be there. How about you?